We are on the premises of the International Astronautical Federation in Paris, and I would like to thank Mr. Bonal for joining us today and share a few words on space tourism. So, Mr. Bonal, hello, and I would like to ask you first, um, what's the reason for you to be here today? Thank you, Thomas, for welcoming me in. Almost, I, I kind of feel in my house here, because you know that I, I do chair the uh, uh, symposium on space transportation at IAF, so I'm kind of part of the house. And in the margin of my activities of space transportation, naturally, space tourism is the next step. There seems to be a disconnection between private and institutional space activities. What could the industry of uh, space tourism bring to space activities as a whole? Okay, so to, to answer to this very nice question, I need to bring a third cap. My first one was IAA, my second one IAF, my third one is CNES. So CNES is the French Space Agency. So the, the real answer from a space agency is fourfold. First one is space tourism. Uh, what is it? It's just a private thing in order to send some uh, uh, millionaire, uh, millionaire Americans and do some uh, uh, fun in space. That's not our business. We won't spend taxpayers' money for this activity. Second point, but wait, maybe we'll have to, uh, to, to regulate this activity. Maybe it will be our responsibility to give the go-ahead for these kind of activities. Sir, careful, there may be a synergy with our activities. There could be spin-offs. We need to be very aware of what is going on. Force, well, let's admit it's fun. So that's why we follow it. Precisely, beyond those, uh, uh, the recreational use of, uh, sp of space tourism, uh, does it have positive fallouts on humanity? Very frankly, right now, no. Right now, what, what is it? it? It's just you, you take a small plane, kind of this jet plane, uh, size of uh, stuff, you put two, three, four passengers, you just make a zoom at 100 or 120 kilometer altitude, just as the border of space, you come back, there is nothing to be gained today. But what about tomorrow? And this is main question mark. What will happen after these first activities? So clearly, today, no interest, no immediate interest, but we are opening the door to something which may be much more interesting in the future, with plenty of spin-off. Maybe we'll go one day from point A to point B with this kind of activity. Maybe there can be some homeland security activities linked to this. Plenty of uh, open points. Okay, so there are potential positive fallouts. Uh, in regards to negative uh, consequences of uh, space tourism, in particular I'm thinking of uh, the environmental footprint of uh, space tourism. Can you tell us a few words about this? What are the real impacts of space tourism on the environment? That's a very good question, Thomas, and uh, uh, we are raising it um, uh, every day. Clearly, if the, if the space tourism activity is just epiphenomenon, meaning uh, once a uh, once a month, one flight a year, or even one flight per week, who cares? There's strictly no effect, it's just a drop of water in the ocean. Now, if we become serious about space tourism, and if, for instance, the, the predictions made by Foutron, uh, saying, stating that there could be 15,000 passengers per year by year 2025, then it will become a major question. And definitely this environmental question, this choice of uh, uh, propellants, for instance, will need to be taken into account since the very beginning of the design of these vehicles. So, let's be positive, there are plenty of uh, green propellant IDs and so I do believe that space tourism will help in uh, developing these new kind of uh, propulsion system. And in your opinion, do you think there are other obstacles to the bloom of space tourism? One of the key point will be how will we how will this activity pass the first years? Okay, what is the situation today? It has not started yet. We've had the two victory flights of a, of a spaceship one uh, in in 2004 above the, the border and nothing yet. So how will it start? How often will they fly? Will they have any kind of problem? Will they will they have a serious problem one day? How will they overcome this? If, if the thing is grappling correctly and getting a good tempo, then it, will be, then it will be very positive. But the crucial thing will be the 21st years in terms of 
business plan, return, uh, uh, return over investment, uh, risk analysis, uh, stability of the market, and so on. All these are fascinating topics which are completely in the blue today. On the other hand, do you think there would be like factors or drivers that could foster this bloom? Yes, definitely. Uh, uh, you can very well imagine that in the next nearby future, let's say within 20 years, every little aero club everywhere will have its own little business jet just to do a, a, a baptême de l'air, as we say in French, just to, to, to uh, open mind to people and then it will really correspond to a new dimension for, for everybody. And uh, I really do believe that uh, in long term this activity can be very cheap. You just land, you just fill again, you just sweep your windshield and go back again. And this will be very positive. Last question I would like to ask you, because you talk with a lot of passion, you are very passionate about space tourism. What makes you so excited about it? It is, I, 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 I believe it's a kind of door which is open to, I don't know what. And really this is thrilling. I tend to think that uh, today we are in the, in the years of uh, Santos Dumont. Santos Dumont, who very close to here, was just taking his small first plane and doing one kilometer from point A, coming back to point A, and everybody thought, but that's stupid, what is the use of it? There it's, he's polluting, there's no interest, he's going to get killed. And, uh, but he kept thinking, well, there must be something behind it. And I have exactly the same feeling with this activity of space tourism, or more generally, private human access to space. It is, it can be, it may be, I hope it will be, an open door to something new, something really strange.